Hello, fellow Frightmare fiends. I'm Nathan Shelton, creator of the Frightmare Theater Podcast, and I wanted to take just a second to discuss a topic near and dear to our little black hearts. The current worldwide health crisis has touched everyone's lives, and few more so than the lives of small business owners out there. We wanted to give a very special shout out to one of our favorite small businesses right here in Chicago, Bucket O' Blood Books and Records. Jin and Grant are huge supporters of the show, and we are so lucky to have this outstanding spooky shop right here to buy, sell, and trade all of our area entertainment goodies. Specializing in sci-fi, horror, fantasy, fiction, punk, indie, metal, rock, new wave, and so much more, this really is your one-stop entertainment superstore for all things genre. And guess what? You don't have to be in Chicago to check them out. They have a great online presence and ship worldwide. So check them out on Facebook, Twitter, BucketOblood.com, and get a look at their killer products and swag on Big Cartel and Disc Dogs. Stay safe and happy, boys and ghouls, and together we will keep the creeps going strong. Now, sit back and ignore the real world horrors for a few imagined ones with tonight's eerie episode. Thanks for listening. The hour has grown late and shadows lurk around every corner. She sells seashells by the seashore. But did you know that he quells tea bells by King Vidor? I bet you didn't. But now you do. I'm chock full of tasty tidbits like that. Here's another. Snips and snails and puppy dog tails. That's what little boys are made of. Sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what little girls are made of. Sawdust and raw crust and rusty bustful lust. That's what little homunculi are made of. Nursery rhymes pass the time with the prime and sublime of a well-aged wine. But horror shows always know how to burrow and furrow the brain to the marrow. And since it's the hour now under our power, soon you will cower in our bower of dower. And now, you sickos, you, it is time once again to turn down the lights and turn up the terror. For you are about to unearth the skeleton key that unlocks the forbidden cabinet containing the horrible truths of... Fright Theater. My fetid friends, I am your delightfully decaying host, Dr. Necropolis. Tonight, we are all in for a real treat, as Frightmare Theatre is proud to introduce a very special surprise guest. All the way back from the dead, the renowned dancer, Isadora Duncan, here in the studio performing one of her original scarf dances. Isadora, take it away. Wow, that is magical. She's killing it! Breathtaking. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. How does she move so gracefully? Um, (laughs) Al, uh, how long do we have for this? She's still going strong. Right, yes, but uh, don't we need to get on with tonight's story? This chick looks like she could go all night. Miss Duncan, uh... Miss Duncan! Oh, well. (laughs) And now, loyal listeners, dust off your Ouija board and polish your crystal ball, for you are being summoned from beyond for tonight's ghastly get-together. The Ghostman always rings twice. Now, please don't ruin this for me, Kevin. You too, Lars. Me? Well, I wouldn't dare, Mary. 
this is your party. I wouldn't want any hand in spoiling your fun. Although she might get her hand in our pockets. Be sure to keep your eyes on your wallet, Lars. And that's such a lovely necklace, Sarah. I'd hate to see it snatched away when the lights go out. <laughs> Please. I knew I should have made this a girls only evening. Mary's right. I want to see where this goes. Lars, Kevin. Cheers. Cheers. All right, here we go. Hello, Miss Gordon. Come in, come in. Hello, my dear. I was afraid you hadn't heard me knock. Although it wouldn't have been that bad standing out there all night. The outside of the house is just as lovely as the inside. I do apologise. We were just getting everything set up for you. Let me take your umbrella. Ooh, thank you. Hello, Miss Gordon. I'm Sarah. Hello. Sarah and I have known each other for years. I guess you have to when you both live just down the street from one another. Yes. Everybody in the street knows everyone. And everything. This is my husband, Lars. Hello, Miss Gordon. And my name's Kevin. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you all. I hope you were able to find our home without any trouble. I was afraid all this rain might make it difficult to read the street signs. No trouble at all. Lars and I had to end up simply driving over because of it. Even though we live only about five houses down. Such a waste of petrol, but I do hate being wet. Well, I did give a ring to the royal escort about bringing her over, but the Queen had already put in a request for it tonight. <laughs> Can I get you anything to drink? If you mean a cocktail, then I'll have to pass. I avoid all forms of drugs. Then a tea, perhaps. Many people forget that tea is still a drug. <laughs> And a strict fasting is always necessary when I'm conducting. It's not something to be taken lightly. By the looks of her, I don't think she can be taken lightly either. Fasting all day, my foot. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have anything herbal, then I will most thankfully accept. I'll put the water on. So, how long have you been doing this, Miss Gordon? We're all quite curious how this works. I'm not sure. Perhaps always. Usually, though, it's formed from sudden trauma. My husband died many years ago, and ever since, things have been highly elevated in that area. Not as highly elevated as a sense of fantasy, eh, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you have a seat, Miss Gordon? Since Mary's in the kitchen fixing tea, I'll happily take her place as hostess in the meantime. Thank you, dear. And if there's a hostess, then there's usually a host. Right, Kevin? Um, uh, yes, well, right. Would you like me to take your bag or, or, or suitcase? <laughs> I won't be staying the night. This is my dictaphone. It records everything for me. I would like to use it tonight if you don't object. I use it for all my sessions. I don't see any problem with that. As long as you don't leave it recording after you leave. <laughs> no, no. It's only for posterity. It is essential for those who work in this field to possess the necessary proof. Have you used one of these before? We have one at the office. I'll set it up for you if you like. I would be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. But of course. Anything for Miss Gordon. Are you warm enough? Would you like us to light the fire? I may be older than everyone here, but I am not on the brink of death. It always seems that if anyone is over the age of 65, everyone coddles them like a newborn babe. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Actually, I am quite cold. <laughs> and while you're at it, could you fetch me a comforter and a water bottle for my aching feet? Oh, well, yes, I, I'll be right back. I'm only kidding. About the comforter and the water bottle. Or if you could light a fire, then that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Oh, I do hate missing out on jokes. Miss Gordon is just pulling one over on us, that's all. And it probably won't be the last. <clears throat> here is the tea. Would you like to have it here or over where we'll be sitting? I'll just have a sip here. Thank you. What are you doing, Lars? I'm setting up Miss Gordon's dictaphone. It will be recording all of our words, all of our thoughts. Be careful what you think tonight, Sarah. Not that there would be anything to hear when played back. <laughs> oh, yes, there would. All of my thoughts would be about you, my dear. But the gory details wouldn't be fit for broadcast. Oh, the fire. Fire? Is there going to be a fire? Good heavens, no. The fire's not just from a bad circulation. It also helps with the energy. Their energy. I'm concerned about mine. 
I've recently been fighting off a terrible cold because of the rain. No worry, dear. I think the rest of ours will be enough to sufficiently carry the load. There. Nice, roaring, energetic fire. And we have candles over here. Sarah, would you mind helping me light them? Of course. Oh, you planned everything so diligently. Most of the time when I go to a client's house, everything is so thrown together. They have no knowledge of anything. No idea what they're getting into. You're making it all sound so serious. You must be prepared for anything, I'm afraid. Kevin, Lars, what are you doing? We're waiting for the show to start. Sounds like you have everything under control in there. There are many things to do. We're lighting the candles. And I lit the fire. My duty is done. Lars, what have you done to help? Me? Well, I've nearly finished off your bottle of brandy. Put the pool cues down and get over here. And leave the brandy behind. Your energy is going to be utterly worthless to us. Yes, and I already have a cold. <coughs> it's all right. It's really the mental state that's most important. Mental abilities are unfortunately something that half of our party lacks. It requires complete focus from all involved. Oh, he's focused, he's focused. Lars, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, 36 toes. See, he's focused. Over the phone, you mentioned that you'd spoken with many different illustrious figures, but you wouldn't call any of them out by name. If I might be so bold, may I ask if you'd be willing to divulge any of them now? That's the question I get asked most often. Unfortunately, I do take a vow of secrecy in order to protect their identities. It's sort of a personal code of mine, which I always break. Oh, do tell. Well. I'm sure you've heard of many of them. Maximilien Robespierre and Jacques-Louis David. Caravaggio, very tortured, I'm afraid. Charlotte Bronte, both sisters, actually. Marcus Agrippa, William Butler Yeats is a regular. Charles Dickens. Maybe we can call on him. I always wanted to know how his last book ended. And my favourites, Felicity and Perpetua, both very pious. But what a sense of humour. They would have absolutely slayed as a duo act for the follies. I think we're just about ready. Good, good. Although this tea is so soothing, I almost hate to waste any. <sighs> there. Come sit at the table, you two. Is there any preference in seating arrangements, Miss Gordon? I tend to prefer that married couples sit across from one another, so... Sarah, you sit next to uh, Kevin, right? Kevin, yes. Mary, you sit next to Sarah and Lars next to Mary. And just because you two are sitting next to one another doesn't mean you can play games. Yes, Miss Lind. Oh, the lights! I forgot to have you turn out the lights. Not a problem. A darkened room isn't really necessary, but I've always found it to add a little something to the ambiance. And the clients expect it. Hollywood has certainly had its effect on the showmanship aspect. Ah, much better. Thank you, Mary. And I'm going to set this in the centre. What's that for? You'll see. Should we hold hands now? Not quite yet. First, I will fill you all in on what to expect this evening. A wide variety of people have elicited many different reactions. No gathering is ever the same. And you must believe me when I say that nothing is rehearsed or pre-planned. This is why I almost always insist on making house calls rather than holding meetings at my home. And as already stated, it is the reason why I record these sessions, so as to submit them as evidence. The possibility for perceived deceit is too high in people's eyes. And, unfortunately, with many of those in my field, that possibly is an increase in fact. But ask any who I have helped and they will vouch on my behalf. I have no lack for confidence in my abilities. Will we see anything? It all depends. Sometimes they're in the mood to show themselves and other times they are quite shy. Again, it also depends on the intent of those involved in trying to contact them. I can't do it all on my own. Please, Kevin. I will. I would have thought you'd bring along a Ouija board. I've heard they can be dangerous. Oh, some experience can be quite nice. I've known those who have actually dictated finished novels from someone on the other side and had them published to great reviews. 
other experiences can be not quite so nice. Like what? I'm sure you've heard of possession. Yes. Yes. That's bad enough. But there is also something known as obsession. Users of the board can become so attracted to it that it becomes a sort of drug to them. They fixate on it, are hypnotised by it. They don't eat, they don't bathe, they cut off all communication with friends and loved ones until one day they simply waste away. How sad. I never use them. Not that I haven't in the past, and not that I'd ever be weak enough to be tempted by them. I've just moved on from them is all. I wouldn't advise playing with one if I were you. If you have one, throw it out immediately. I'm having second thoughts, I'm afraid. Oh, my dear, I apologise. I wish we'd never touched on the subject. Besides, we're not using the Ouija, and I am a warm-torn medium. I'm an old pro who's been through many battles. I've heard of ectoplasm. Will we see any of that? Ugh, ectoplasm is nothing but a charlatan's trick. If you wanted to see ectoplasm, then all I would have to do is stuff a sheet of gauze in my mouth and spit it out onto the table. Ew. Now I'd say that would be worth seeing for a pound. Oh, this is going to be fun. Fun? Yes, it can be. Serious? Absolutely. I keep going back and forth between the positive and the negative, but I must reiterate that we will hopefully be communicating with other realms. There's no guarantee as to whom will present themselves tonight, and they may be a lost loved one, a figure from history. Franz Liszt. A family pet, or someone we don't even know. Someone who may have once lived in this house. With that being said, have any of you ever experienced paranormal occurrences? Well, at our house there sometimes is a strange rapping on the upstairs wall at exactly 6.30 in the morning. What? That's the water running through the pipes when I shave for work, dear. (laughs) Well then, no. I guess not. Ever so often I have heard voices. Ah. Is it a man's or a woman's voice? A man's. Oh, did you know about this, Kevin? Yes, but I don't see him as competition, if that's what you're thinking. I can see right through him. (laughs) Why? You never told me that. I didn't want to scare you. We're all sitting down at a table in a dark room lit by nothing but candlelight, getting ready to talk to feral spirits, and you say you didn't want to scare her? Be prepared for the possibility that it, he, could show up tonight. All right, the time is at hand. A few things before we begin. I thought we already went through all that. Follow my instructions. When I ask you to do something, you do it. Candle flames have been known to flicker during the presence of a spirit. Sometimes even more than a flicker. We may be sitting in the dark by the end of the session. There will be cold drafts. This is another indication that a spirit is with us. Very rarely have ports appeared from out of nowhere. A ports? Yes, Kevin. Apports are gifts from the spirit world. They manifest only when the energy and intent of all those involved, even the spirits, are at their highest. They typically exist in our world for five minutes, sometimes even twenty. One moment they appear and then the next, they're gone. That's why they're so difficult to prove. I've seen a woman's lost necklace drop from the ceiling and into her lap and a bouquet of flowers appear out of nowhere. Ectoplasm may not be real, but mist formed by an increase in heat or cold and even, yes, saliva from an unknown presence is all too possible. That's why many ports are slightly wet. Remember on our first date when I kissed you in the dark in the funhouse of the World's Fair? Stop it! At some point, I will be going into a trance. I won't have to tell you when this happens, you will know it. I will be communing with my guide, Silas. He is my, shall you say, contact with the other side. He and I have known each other for a long time and have performed many sittings together. Every medium has a guide. We have formed a bond of trust over the years and there's nothing that he will tell me that is a lie. Anything I say will be the absolute truth. But that's not to say that those communicating with Silas are always telling the truth. These lies tend to belong to a dark entity. A dark entity's only concern is malevolence. They seek to attach themselves to others like a lamprey on a fish. Usually they prefer the innocent because of the luminous light from which they can feed. Or they are sometimes attracted to those with evil intent. Those who are 
easier to sway. The symptoms of a dark entity's influence are ennui, fatigue, and an intense feeling of heaviness. They can be extremely dangerous. Let us begin. Wait, what? Are we all ready? Yes. 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 Would you be so kind as to turn on the di- phone, Mr. Fenton? Remember, spirits, no harsh language in front of the girls. Join hands, please. Keep constant, firm contact at all times. Do not break the link, no matter what happens. Clear your minds. Any unnecessary thoughts will confuse Silas. Think of nothing but the sound of nothing. Now, I want us all to take a deep breath when I say breathe. 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 Silas, are you there? It's Emily. I want to talk with you again. Answer me if you're there. Silas, it's Emily. Come on, Silas, beguile us. Kevin, please. Silas, if you're there, make your presence known. Hello, my friend. I hope you've been well. The candles. Look at the candles. Ah, no. I haven't talked to William in a long time, sadly. (gasps) She has. Well, she's still upset that he based the character of Rosalind on her and never gave proper credit. Is this a seance or a family reunion? I was hoping you might be able to speak with someone for us. His name is not known, but his essence still exists here on the earthly plane. He is thought to be here, somewhere in this house, and has been trying to make contact with Mrs. Mary Lent. Tell me, is this true? Ring the bell once for yes and twice for no. Laws, I swear, if you're back there playing pool, I'm... Darling, I'm right here. Oh, my God. Very good. Thank you, Silas. I can always depend on you. I have another request. Is the man in question here now? Thank you. Do you feel that breeze? Is he able to contact us tonight? Thank God for that. Is there anyone willing to come through tonight? Mr and Mrs Lent and Mr and Mrs Fenton would very much like to meet them. Oh no. Are they friendly? Oh, good. Silas, I give them authorization to enter through me in order to communicate with our friends. <sighs> the candles have gone out. <sighs> Don't let go of our hands. Who is this? To whom am I speaking to? Well, say something. <laughs> My name is Mary, and this is my husband, Kevin. And I'm Sarah, and this is my husband, Lars. Lars? When I was a brigadier in Crimea, my good friend Tom had a son named Lars. Quite the bastard. Well, this might be the same one then. Oh, very good, Sarah. And what is your name? Why am I here? My wife wants to know if you're the man she's been hearing in our house. Could be. I'm often heard in many wives' houses. How do you think think Tom's son got to be a bastard? Oh. I must be going now. Hello? Who am I speaking with? Good 
darkness. Another one. My name is Sarah. And I'm Mary. I'm very pleased to meet your acquaintance. Might we ask who you are? M my name is Catherine. I saw light glowing in the dark. It was so beautiful that I came to her. And now, here you are. How strange. Yes. Where are you from? Not from here. From far away. How far? Not from, from here. here. Near the cliff? Next to the ocean? Yes. How, How did, did you know? know? How did you know? Did you farm the fields? For wheat? Three children? How, How did, did you, you know, know that? Are you happy? Are you the one I've heard speaking? I must tell you something. I'm afraid you're... I'm afraid you're... Are in... you stuck here? I, I am, am stuck, stuck here. here. And, and I, I am happy. I'm happy to have come through, but... I, I need, need to come, come through. through. I need... I need to come through. I need... I need... I need... Miss Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> I need you. Who are you? I need your light. And your love. <laughs> your entire table's shaking. Mrs. Gordon! Stop it! Stop it! Please! Shake her! Shake her! Wake her up! Good God! I'll get some water. No! Don't break the link! Mrs. Gordon! Shake her! Stop! Stop! Please stop! Thank you for having me into your home. <laughs> I will part by leaving you with a gift. There will be murder tonight. Murder! 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 She's collapsed! Miss Gordon! Miss Gordon, wake up, wake up, please! Oh, she's dead! No, she's still breathing. Help me lift her head. Get some water. I'll open the window. Please, Miss Gordon! Wake up, please! Miss Gordon! <sighs> Thank God! Give yeah, Miss Gordon, drink this. Thank you. Thank you. Are you all right? <clears throat> well... What's happened? It's very hazy when I first come out of it. I understand. Oh, you can stop the recording now. Thank you. Play it back, Mr. Fenton, if you could. No, thank you. Well, what does it mean? Remember what I said about some spirits lying? Yes. This one lied. It pretended to be something else entirely. I don't think it was evil, though. Only playing a practical joke happens all the time. Oh, it frightens everyone, but I come out of it relatively unscathed. Silas, you're going to have to read people better on your side. I thought you were supposed to have a sixth sense or something. I'm sorry we didn't meet your spectral friend. I had hoped this would have been a more pleasant evening. Well, it wasn't pleasant, but it was certainly exciting. I'm not sure if it was either pleasant or exciting, more infuriating. What do you mean? I'm not giving in to what we saw, or think we saw. Kevin? What about the candles? And the wind? And that voice? Oh, was I speaking in tongues again? Yes, speaking nonsense like you have been all night. Kevin, it's all right, Mary. I must admit that trying to convince someone of something they can't prove is very, well, realistic. Only those with certain sensibilities are able to know the unknown. Maybe even like yourself. I'm sorry, Miss Gordon. We're all very tired, and Kevin's been... Stop! What is... Stop speaking! Everyone! What is she looking at? I don't know. She's just staring at the hutch in the corner. Be gone, evil spirit! You're not welcome here any longer. You never were. You're wrong. There will be no murder here tonight. 
I cast you out of this house and back to whence you came. You will never return and will never contact the Lents ever again. I apologise. Just as you were talking, Mary, a black shadow grew in the corner of the room. Black shadows are the dark entities I told you about. They believe that they've been called to enter our realm, or at least to try when a tear in the veil has occurred. They usually appear when... Well, <laughs> enough about that. <laughs> what exactly did I say when I was in my trance? You know what you said. You said murder. You said that there would be a murder tonight. Oh, dear. It wasn't what I thought it was. Not at all. Well, that explains things. Explains what? Oh, I should never have... No. Oh, I would like you all to have parting gifts which I give to all of my clients. Here is... Oh, if I can find it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Three protective medallions made of quartz crystal. Oh, crystal is a very powerful cleanse on stone that purifies many negative energies. Would murder be considered a negative energy? Or how about an amethyst? <gasps> I have only one, so you'll have to fight over who gets it. What is the time? Almost ten o'clock. Oh, I should never commune after nine. Very unlucky. Where's the dictaphone? Ah, here we are. What's wrong, Miss Gordon? After an all-day fast, I'm always frightfully famished, and I don't want to bother you for something to eat. And besides, it's very late. You forgot your bell. Oh, keep it for me. Perhaps you'd like to lead your own seance sometime. You're a natural. I've had the greatest of pleasures in meeting you. All of you. Yes. And all of you, too. Lars! Good night. Good night. Good night. I've never heard such... Kevin, I don't want to hear any more of it. Kevin, Mary, Sarah and I will be leaving. What? I want to stay. Sarah, we're leaving. I'm not sure I want to be alone at home right now after... Well, alone? Well, I'll be there. That's what worries me. Lars, we'll finish that pool game another time, without interruptions. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Lars. I appreciate you coming over, and... You have your things? Yes. And thanks for the wonderful evening. Sarah. Bye. You didn't have to push me out the door like that, Lars. If somebody had to. You never would have left. I didn't want to. Well, I did. I'm not sure I want to go home with you tonight. Why not? I'm tired of arguing. Is it because you think I'm going to... murder you? Sarah? Sarah? It's in the car. Want a nightcap before we go to bed, dear? Go to bed? After what we've just saw tonight? What exactly did we see? Or better yet, think we saw? Even if you don't believe anything we saw, or even felt, can't you at least accept or even listen to what I believe? Darling, I, I know it's easy to want to believe that there are magical people who talk to ghosts, but the fact is, and that word is important, fact is that nothing has ever been proven. Countless tricksters, no, no, thieves, have been caught in the act basically stealing gullible people's money. Am I gullible? No. Well, yes. <laughs> and it's not just about stealing people's money. It's also about giving people false hope that their dead iguana wants to talk to them from beyond the grave. And who made all those noises then? The wind? The clock, the fire. Did you ever think she might have an accomplice? Maybe her husband, even? But he's dead. Says her. What if I told you that I've not just heard one voice, but two voices in this house? A man's as well as a woman's. And that dark shadow that Miss Gorda was so startled by has me worried. I know, you've mentioned hearing someone in the house, but that could be anything. The neighbor kids are always playing in the backyard and screaming. As far as the shadow goes. No. I think there are two spirits and an evil spirit. And now that I think about it, now that I really think about it, the two voices sounded. well, they sounded like us. Maybe they were us. How is that even possible? You're making our home sound like a haunted hostel. I also believe that the female we heard tonight was possibly trying to warn me. Warn you? About what? Nothing. Warn you about what? I didn't believe it before, but after tonight... But what? That you... That 
you, that you were going to murder me. Ridiculous. Come have a drink. No. It'll help you sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. Stop. What? Stop where you are. Don't come any nearer. Darling, you're scaring me. You're scaring me. Now don't come closer. I'm just offering you a drink is all. You drugged it. Sorry? You drugged it because you want to murder me. Mary, you've let all of this get to your imagination. Don't tell me you believe that woman. She made a lot of sense. She made no sense at all. Now just take my hand. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Darling, what are you doing? And where did you find that gun? I don't know. It's just there on the hutch. Doesn't really matter right now. You've never fired a gun in your life. Well, I have now. You really need to work on your aim. Ow, there. That's better. No! Keep away! Stop! Stop! No! A port! A port! Hello! <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you, but I must have left my keys. I've been standing next to my car ever since I left. When I realised they were gone, I didn't quite know what to do. Should I come back in and check for them after already saying my goodbyes? How awkward! I even hid behind the bumper when Sarah and Lars left. And then I thought, should I take a bus, go by foot, risk it by hitchhiking, or... Oh, dear. Oh! Oh. So soon usually takes about an hour. I thought that was gunshots I heard. Well, make that 10 out of 10 then. Not a bad track record. At least they seem to have a good time tonight before their accident. <laughs> oh, Silas, I'm beginning to feel so guilty about this racket. Well, I know it's not exactly a racket. You do bring in the closest spirits you can find and we do tell them the truth. Except about the murders, of course. That part is left up to them and the strength of their marriage, you might say. But even still, chalk it all up to the power of the mind, I guess. Freud was right. <laughs> even violence erupts from sexual tension. Poor dears. Silas, it's times like these that I wish you were here to give me a hug to comfort me. Give me a physical sign so that I know that you're here. Hello. There's the telephone. Just a minute, just a minute. Silas? Hello? Hello? Who's this? Hello, Mary? Uh, uh. Yes? Well, take this! There. Now she's heard two more murders. Another etiquette lesson in being a guest learned tonight. Never pick up the phone in a stranger's house. <laughs> oh, silly me. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I know my fingerprints are all over it. Oh, 
it will disappear in a matter of... Ah! There, you see? Already gone. You should know these things by now. Really. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one doing all the work. All you have to do is dig up a few friends and make things go boom. Sorry, sorry, you're right. It is all my fault. And besides, what husband would stick around to make sure his wife is cared for in life, even though she was the one who sent him to the afterlife? True love never dies, does it, dear? Oh, and good job with that shadow. It even startled me. Silas, why are you acting so nervous? Well, anyway, I'd better get out of here. I'm sure the police will be over any minute now. Mary, Kevin, if you're still hanging around, then I'd like to tell you that I do apologise. And if you meet Lars and Sarah, then give them my condolences too. Although, you're not in the here and now. Just think of the there and then as a sort of couple's retreat. It's done wonders for Silas and my marriage. Right, Silas? Now, where did you float off to? Anyways, I'll be taking tonight's recordings to the radio circuits. We'll be famous when they read about the murder, so... Well, I won't outstay my welcome. Hmm. Is it getting darker in here? I feel so heavy. I must be getting tired. I had better be going now. I'll say my goodbyes as if you were still here. Thanks for having us. It's been a lovely evening. See you at the funeral. Miss Gordon makes quite the exquisite dinner party guest, doesn't she? With the most delightful, dreadful parting gifts. There's nothing I love more than a happy ending. Much like the one Miss Duncan should be finding for this excessively long scarf dance. Isadora, are we anywhere near the finale, darling? It's amazing! The scarves seem to move of their own volition! Like a beautiful rainbow-colored dream. All right, you two, snap out of it. Miss Duncan! Your time ended 30 minutes ago, and I'm afraid you won't be paid another cent if you continue. Well, that did the trick. No! You killed the dream! You can't take this from us, Doc! Oh, very well, if you'd like to call management in here to renegotiate our time allotment... Nope. Never mind. When you put it that way, we can learn to deal with the disappointment. I'll even enjoy it. That's what I thought. And so, until next time, my little boys and ghouls, I am your woefully wicked host, Dr. Necropolis, and this has been Frightmare Theatre. The Frightmare Theatre Podcast is brought to you by Arcane, where nightmares become reality. Tonight's radio theatre presentation, entitled The Ghostman Always Rings Twice, was written and directed by Andrew McMurtry and featured the voice talents of Lisa Murphy, Heath Hellhouse, Annie Crumbaugh, Andrew McMurtry, and Ellen Spann. The Frightmare Theatre theme and additional music is created by the terrifyingly talented Chris Porcelli and can be found along with other haunting scores at chrisporcellipiano.com. Be sure to stalk Frightmare Theatre on social media and subscribe to the Frightmare Theatre podcast via iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or your favorite listening app. We invite you to join the Frightmare Theatre Undead family and support us on Patreon where you will receive members-only special content not found anywhere else. All previous petrifying episodes of Frightmare Theatre are proudly displayed for the shock and horror of the masses at FrightmareTheaterPodcast.com. We so deeply wish to thank you for listening and hope you join us in the shadows again next month 
for an all-new episode. Until then, I am the announcer, wishing you pleasant dreams.